In this video, we're hopefully going to fix all the issues I've got with my 2011 Audi TTS Black Edition. Let me show you what happened when I took it for a test drive. Let's take this car for a test drive and let's see what happens. I can't believe I've got um, four warning lights on. So I've got a spoiler warning light on, so there's definitely something wrong with the spoiler. Um, I don't know what that's to do with. And I've got an ABS warning light and also a headlight aiming warning light as well, so... Don't know what's happened. <laughs> so these are all things I'm going to have to uh, get the codes for and go check them out. And if you can hear it, whoa, something's flapping really bad underneath the car now. It's definitely flapping because when I slow down, it actually stops. So some plastic panel hasn't been secured properly. I'm going to have to have a look at that as well. Right, I just pulled off it and it's the main under tray at the front that had just come down the front and was just flapping up and down. So I've just pushed it back in. Um, it's because I went up to a bit of speed, so it made, it made it pop out. So now I'm just taking a nice little gentle drive home and we should be fine. But as for driving the car, well, I'm used to automatics, but this gearbox is so easy. Yeah, it's just absolutely pops into gear, very easy. The clutch is fairly light. She drives absolutely beautiful, solid as a rock. Brakes, oh yeah, <laughs> fantastic. No problems with those. So I'm well impressed, and as for the power, well, I mean, you know, it, it seems to pull. Because it's only a little car, that's what you've got to remember. Yeah, it's only 260 odd horsepower, but in a car this size, that means a lot. I think I'm going to enjoy this car. And yeah, like I say, power wise. Oh, she, she really does pull nicely. Two litre turbo engine in a small car like this. I mean, you can feel a bit of the lag until the turbo kicks in, but yeah, when it does, hey, we're off. Let's get back to the drive, let's plug in. VCTS and see if we can diagnose some of these issues. So I couldn't believe it after having a nice clear dashboard for all the time I was working with it in the garage after the test drive I've now got all these warning lights which is just to recap I've got an ESP warning light, I've got an ABS warning light, I've got a headlight level adjustment warning light and I've got the rear spoiler warning light. Not forgetting the awful sound I was getting from a flapping under tray. So it's time to dig out the VCDS computer again, just to have a look and diagnose what these issues are. Oh, by the way, a massive shout out to Rustech, who have contacted me after watching my last video and said, please accept this code to upgrade your Hex V2 interface to an unlimited VIN version, and we don't want anything in return. Well, Rustech, I'm giving you it in return, and I'm giving you a little shout out on my channel. Thank you very much. It is massively appreciated. So I'll leave a link down below in the description of where you can get the software and the Hex V2 interface that will enable you to do these things with your car. Right, let's get the computer, let's get the interface, let's get in the car. Well, here we are back again in the car then. I've got my trusty laptop and my trusty Hex V2 from Rostec. Links for this and the software will be down below in the description if you want to get this for your car. So we need to plug the XV2 into the OBD port, which can be found underneath the headlight switch. So first things first, let's do a full scan of the car. And there we have the results. Now, we know from previous scan that I did, if you look back at my previous video on this car, that half of these things are to do with the fact that I've got an aftermarket stereo in this car, so I'm not worried about them. One thing I'm concerned about is ABS brakes. So let's have a look at that one. So that says it's a wheel speed sensor with a fault code of 290. Okay, make a note of that. Suspension electronics, let's have a look at that. So that's complaining about the ABS control module. Hmm, with a code of 01316. And we've got all wheel drive malfunction. Let's check that. And look at that, that's a vehicle speed signal 00625. And the next one we've got is the steering assist. Again, that's complaining about the ABS control module with the 01316 code. And the last one is the headlight range. Again, ABS control module. 01316 so it looks like a lot of these are related and i think i can fix every one of those codes with what's in this box but firstly let's go fix that flapping under tray i've also just taken delivery of these uh, bottle jack ramps what it is you drive your car up put it on a ramp as normal but then the bottle jack allows you to jack it up even higher i'm going to try those out today see if they really help problem being though is my car is a lot lower than this ramp is touching. So we're gonna to have to put some blocks of wood as we're coming in. Mm. 
look underneath, uh, I've got to admit that uh, this is totally my fault because I never secured this bit at the front here, thinking that because these lips here tuck under this, they're never going to come out. But <laughs> the amount of air that must have come in through the actual front of the bumper, pressing down on this, push this out of those bits there. And therefore, yeah, we're going to need to secure these. So it was totally my fault. Let's fix that now. So now I'll remove the cover. First job is to fix this, because this really needs to be attached to here. Uh, there is there is a fitting in there, and we just need to drill a hole through that into this so that we can actually secure that there. Right guys, we've got a fixing in there now and I've got my fixings in here ready to take the screws when we put it back on. So now it's time to refit the under tray. done it was my fault for fudging it in the first place i should have put those bolts in the front of the under tray they'll tip for you guys don't miss those bolts out because the actual force of the air, air coming into the grill pushes that down and will loosen it anyway i've done that now i've got to deal with all the other faults and as i said i think i can fix them with what's in here let me show you so what this is is a rear wheel speed sensor as we saw in one of those errors shown on VCDS. And having Googled this, it actually says that something like this can cause all of those ABS errors in one go. So I'm hoping that after I replace this, take the car for a little run, everything will clear up. Let me show you how to fit one of these. So here we are guys, under the rear left wheel. Now, some people say you need to take the wheel off, but you don't, look, you can actually get into this. This is the speed sensor here. So first of all, what we need to do is to remove the actual uh, wire. That came off quite easy, actually. I thought it was gonna be hard than that. Just put that out of the way for now. And then using an Allen key, which is just a bit tight. So I'll just see if I can get a, a wobble socket. It's gone all the way in nicely. Loosen. And that's come out quite nicely. Now I'm just going to jiggle this. There we go. Yeah, it's been there a long time. Look, it's uh, pretty well dried up. Here I have the replacement. I've put just a tiny little bit of grease just on the top and on the back of there just to stop this from hopefully getting uh, locked in again when I need to change them later on. So we go wiggle that all the way in. I've even got new bolts for a treat. Now we're trying to locate this bolt hole. And then gently tighten it up. It doesn't need too much force on here. So this is a plastic part. And then not forgetting to replace the wiring till you get that nice click. Well, you couldn't hear it, but uh, I felt it. Right, let's go find out VCDS and see if we can clear those faults. First thing is let's do the auto scan again. I'll just fast forward through this and we'll get to the results. Right, so here we go. So now what we're going to do, we're going to hit this one here to clear all DTCs. Go. Right, so as you can see there from that screen at this point here, we don't have any ABS warnings. We know the steering wheel, the CAN gateway, the sound system, radio and telephone are all to do with the aftermarket stereo I've got installed in my car. So what I now need to do is take this for a little test drive and make sure those errors don't come back on. Good news, that's fixed all the issues, apart from the spoiler. Still get the spoiler warning light on, but I think that comes and goes. I think it just comes on just to say that the spoiler's not going up and down. But apart from that, I'm not bothered because that won't be an MOT failure because that light disappears off the dashboard. I'm so happy. <laughs> that one little speed sensor, which I got four of them, £17. 
So what's that? Eight pound, four pound twenty-five. It was. I brought on all those lights on this car. I think these cars are sent to try us sometimes. That's going to be it for this video, guys. I've run out of time to diagnose the spoiler because I think that's going to take a little bit more work. So join me on the next one. We'll have a look at that and we'll just try and get this spoiler working. And then the car is almost 100%. Well, apart from a paint job. But that'll be in a later video anyway. Hope you enjoyed this. If you did, don't forget to subscribe because it really helps with build the channel with those analytics. And don't forget to give this a thumbs up if you liked it. Till the next time, stay safe.